Hallelujah. We started a series of teaching earlier this month. I like to teach in series so that I make sure that we are all following and we can have continuity as far as encounters with the Lord is concerned. And our theme for this month has been the grace for harvest. The grace for harvest. Every one of us needs to be aware that there are no emergencies in the realm of the spirit. It might be an emergency to you on earth, but for those who are in the spirit, there's no such thing as an emergency. Because those who are in the spirit have an understanding of the times and the seasons. So they are not put in panic mode. They are always relaxed because they already know what was going to happen. So we said, by God's divine agenda, the month of May is special in God's calendar because it is a month of the beginning of harvest. It's the month that begins the season of harvest. In John chapter 4 and verse 35, the Bible gives us this secret here. John chapter 4 and verse 35, the Bible says, Say not ye that there are yet four months and then commit the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Jesus was telling them in that instance, don't wait till after the fourth month, the fourth month before you begin to harvest. Because according to God's calendar, after the first four months of the year, the harvest begins. And May is the fifth month, following right after the fourth month. And the Bible buttresses this point in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 15. Proverbs 10 and verse 5, sorry. Proverbs 10 verse 5. The Bible says, He that gathereth in summer is a wise son. And he that sleepest in harvest is a son that causeth shame. So we have been looking at the grace for harvest. Also, if you understand scriptural numerology, scriptural numerology tells us that every number has a spiritual significance. And the number five stands for grace, the grace of God. That's what the number five stands for. So you are blessed if you are born in the month of May. You carry a special grace, whether you know it or not. The month of May, people born in that month, have been marked by God with some special graces. And so when we combine scriptural numerology with the scriptural calendar for the year, we know that this month is a month for grace for the harvest. The grace for the harvest. And the harvest we're talking about is the harvest of souls. It's the harvest of reaching out to people for the Lord. Is the harvest of telling more people about Jesus. Is the harvest of telling people, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. It's the month where we begin to invite people to partake of the goodness of the Lord in the house of the Lord. So we've been looking at that all through the month. And if you missed any of the series of teachings, whether during the Sunday services like this or the midweek services, you can go online on our YouTube page to watch that service, and you will be blessed by them. Today is the last Sunday of the month, and the last Sunday has been dedicated to Thanksgiving because we must always remember to put God first in our Thanksgiving. We must recall all the goodness of the Lord to us and come and give God thanks. So we have dedicated the last Sunday of every month to giving God thanks. That's why you see that we had a lot of prayers on Thanksgiving. We have been singing and worshiping the Lord. The word of exhortation was on Thanksgiving. Everything about services like this is about Thanksgiving. And I'm going to be telling you why in a minute. So for today's teaching, the topic is unveiling the mystery of joy for the harvest. Unveiling the mystery of of joy for the harvest. We are still talking about harvest. Unveiling the mystery of joy for the harvest. 
unveiling the mystery of joy for the harvest. My anchor scripture is from the book of Luke chapter 15 from verse 3 to verse 7. Luke 15 from verse 3 to verse 7. Luke chapter 15, the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 15, verse 3 to 7. The Bible says, And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he finds it? And when he had found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my ship which was lost. And verse 7, where we are going to stop for this morning's teaching, Jesus said, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner, that repents more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Unveiling the mystery of joy for the harvest. You see, harvest time is joy season. Harvest time is joy season. The time to harvest is the beginning of the season of joy. What do I mean by that? It is a time when the rewards of your labor is brought to fruition. Harvest is different from planting time. The time for harvest is not the time for planting. There is time for everything. When you have reaped, when you have sowed rather, is the time when you put in the work to plant in the soil. To weed, to fertilize, huh? to do crop rotation, to do to, to fumigate. But when it's harvest time, the reward of that effort is your experience. Understanding what joy is, is important to both the harvest of now and future harvest. What does this goes to say? In Mark chapter 4, for example, the Lord Jesus gave us a parable of a man who went and saw six things that happened after he sowed the seed. He sowed the seed and when he came back to harvest, he found out six different results. What a shock. It's like you putting money in your 401k <laughs> over the years and you think he's doing well, you never checked on it. And when you retire, they give you $5,000. <laughs> After 30 years or 40 years of putting money in 401k. Trust me, that, would, that, that, that scenario may sound funny, but a lot of people who don't track, monitor, and ask questions about their 401k will receive that shocker after service. But anyway, let's go back to this teaching today. This man planted, and on the time, by the time he was to come and harvest, he experienced four, six results. Six results. Number one, when he got there to see the seed that he has put in the soil, he found out that some of them fell by the wayside. Whew, he lost that one. Mark chapter 4, verse 4. Let's see what happened to those that fell by the wayside. 
The Bible says, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. What a loss. What a loss. Well, he said, no problem. I'm going to come back again. When he came back the second time, he found another result. Some of them had fallen on stony ground. And there was no earth to fertilize it. Mark chapter 4 verse 5. The Bible says, and it came to pass, some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up and it had no depth of earth. Number three, <laughs> the third result he found, he found that some of them had fallen between thorns. Between thorns. Not the result he expected, not what he was hoping to come and harvest during the harvest season. Some fell between the thorns. Mark, Mark 4 verse 7. And the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Wow, what a loss. Then, he went to another plantation, and he looked at the seed that he had planted, and finally some good news. The first set of fruit, of seed, the Bible says they bear forth thirtyfold. Mark 4 verse 7. And verse 8, some bear forth thirtyfold. Not what he expected, but much better. Another bear forth sixtyfold, and then another plantation bettered a hundredfold. Where am I going with this? What we all expect is a hundredfold. But notice how the seed progressed from being on the wayside to being on the ground to being on between thorns, then to yielding fruits. That is what joy does. Joy is the process of seeing improvements in any labels of life. I can imagine this man was not sad or depressed when he saw the first set of seed. The first set of seed were a waste. Why? Because they fell on the wayside and the birds ate them up. But this man kept hope alive and chose to be joyful. But again, because life is unpredictable, the second seed was a waste too. But he kept his joy alive. He kept his hope alive until he began to see results. And he finally saw the results he was looking for. I don't know what stage of life you are in. If you are not having any results to show for your labors, I want to encourage you to keep your joy alive. Because that joy is what you need for the hundredfold harvest. That joy is essential to seeing the end result, which is a hundredfold harvest. That joy is important. Things may not look rosy. You may have said the year 2024 is your year, and six mo five months into it, you haven't had anything to experience. My charge to you this morning is to keep your joy alive because there is a hundredfold ahead of you. There is a hundredfold of blessing. There is a hundredfold of prosperity. There is a hundredfold of health. There is a hundredfold of vitality. There is a hundredfold restoration if you will keep your joy alive. There is a hundredfold of recovery if you will keep your joy alive. January may have been a time where things fell apart on the wayside. February may be a time when things were hard. You couldn't survive. March and April may be a time when you were choked up. You felt like things were over. But I have good news for you. There is a 30-fold coming. Yeah. There is a 60-fold coming. Yeah. There is a 100-fold coming. Yeah. But you must keep your joy alive. 
you must know what joy is and be able to engage in that to see this hundredfold. Rejoice in God always because it is in rejoicing that the harvest, the fullness of the harvest comes. I've always told you there is a difference between joy and happiness. There is a difference between joy and happiness. Joy, let's start with happiness. Happiness is derived from the happenings around you. The happenings that are around you. Joy is based upon happenings. That is the things that are seen. But joy is a fruit and a gift of the Spirit of God. Joy has nothing to do with what you can see or what is happening. Joy is based on eternal things. The things that are not seen. No wonder Paul the Apostle tells us in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18. He said those things that we see with our eyes are temporal. Sickness is temporal because you can see it. Losses are temporal. Disappointment are temporal. Failure is temporal because you can see it. So they will not last forever. You will have failed before. But when you know that you are not a failure, then that failure is temporal. The things that we see, look at that, 2 Corinthians 4.18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Joy is eternal because it is something we can see. It is a fruit of the Spirit as well as the gift of the Spirit. Why do we rejoice or why should we rejoice in harvest? We rejoice in harvest because we know that it is God that gives the increase. We rejoice because we know that no matter what you do, increase belongs to God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6, the Bible tells us that Paul plants, Apollos waters, but it is God that gives the increase. The harvest, the results that you desire can only come from God. But to access God or to see God give the increase, there must be a requirement of joy. I'm not talking about happiness now. I'm talking about joy. I've always said this to you. In the physical you say thank you to anybody who gives you something, right? If I give you a car or I give you an aircraft, I'm sure you will say thank you. But in the spiritual, you have to say thank you first before you receive anything. It's the other way. You have to say thank you before you can get anything from God. So the increase of the harvest you are looking for, the hundredfold of harvest you are looking for, must be preceded with joy. Must be preceded with thanksgiving. Joy must go forth first. Appreciation to God must precede your expectation of a hundredfold. In Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3, Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3, the Bible tells us, that with joy will you draw waters out of the wells of salvation. The wells of salvation contains several good things and everything that God can give to mankind. But you need joy to be able to pull them out, to be able to receive them from the hand of the Lord. Joy. Come and say with me, the joy of the Lord. Say after me, the joy of the Lord will give me the hundredfold harvest. The joy of the Lord will give me the hundredfold harvest. 
So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Everything about the harvest season and the believer is joyful. Why? Because joy changes the habitat. Joy changes the happenings around the believer. The things that you cannot see controls the things you see. The things that you cannot see controls the things you see. So joy can control the happenings around you. That's why joy always brings happiness. Joy controls the experiences around a believer. Joy changes the situation every believer goes through. That's why the devil fights your joy by all means. Do you know that depression is one of the major weapons of the devil to take away joy? There is sadness, then there is depression. Sadness is superficial. Sadness is the opposite of happiness. But depression goes for your joy, the one that can change the situation. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Joy is a game changer. When you have joy, you can have happiness. When you have joy, it can change the happenings, the situations around you. But when depression sets in, depression kills joy. And so there will always be sadness. There will always be sadness. We must be very careful. As long as your joy is intact, you will always overcome. As long as your joy is untampered with, the happiness will change. The situations will turn around. God will show up as long as your joy is intact. Therefore, you must do everything to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You must make sure that you are not tied to the things around you. You must not depend on the things around you to decide on your joy. But you must let your joy change, transform the things around you. The happenings are temporal, but joy is eternal. When you have the joy of the Lord, you receive strength to change and overcome the happenings. This is the secret of the overcomer. The joy that is untouched. The joy of the Lord. Yes, life is tough. Yes, life is hard. But those things are temporal. As long as your joy is in place. Don't let the happenings tamper with the joy of the Lord in your heart. Don't let the situations of what you are going through mess with the joy of the Lord in your heart. Because as long as joy is intact, there will be a change someday and very soon. This is important. This is the mystery of harvest. This is the mystery of harvest. In that scripture that we read, where we started from, this man was experiencing series of failures, but his joy was still intact. The joy of the Lord was still intact in his heart. And so he saw a change. And he finally saw the change he's looking for. Please let the joy of the Lord be in your heart. Let nothing mess with the joy of the Lord. Let rejoicing come from your heart always. And you will see things change around you. Everybody has problems. But some people are smarter than their problems because they will not allow their joy to be tampered with. Everybody has a thing happening in their life that they are not so proud of. Everybody has a weakness. But many, some are smarter than their problems because they won't let their problems determine their joy. They won't let their issues tamper with their joy. And when the devil knows that, then the devil looks for the next person 
who doesn't know this mystery of joy. The mystery of joy is that it can change the happenings around you. I want you to believe that. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what brought you here today. I don't know what is happening. I don't know what happened last night to you. But I can tell you something. Once your joy is intact, that story will change. I'm telling you this. I've experienced it myself. I've gone through seasons in my life that were painful. I've gone through seasons in my life that were very challenging. I just told you that one of my favorite songs was that song we just sang by Todd Dulaney. When my back was really against the wall. When I thought everything was over. But the joy of the Lord brought the angel of the Lord to minister life to me. To bring me out of every situation. Don't let anything tamper with your joy. When joy is in place, it is not over. When joy is in place, it is not over. When joy is in place, it is not over. When joy is in place, it is not over. Mm. The joy of the Lord gives you that strength to overcome. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Then said he unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, <laughs> drink the sweet. <laughs> Your, your, your business is in trouble. He said, no. Don't pay attention to the happenings. Go your way. Take yourself out. Go and eat. Enjoy yourself. The house is burning. Go and enjoy yourself. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength to change that situation. People are saying things about you that are untrue. Don't worry about that. Let the joy of the Lord remain, and strength will come to overcome them. He said to them, go your way and eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions unto them <laughs> for whom nothing is prepared. In spite of what is happening to you, in spite of what you are going through, when you don't act like what you are going through, what you are going through will come and pass. When you don't act like what you are going through, when it's not written on your face, what you are going through will come and pass. Wash yourself. Put on a smile on your face. If you're a lady, put on good makeup. Hallelujah. <laughs> Make your hair. For the joy of the Lord is your secret of strength and the days when things are tough. In Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, one of my favorite scriptures, I draw strength from this scripture. This is also talking about when the worst happens or when the worst is happening to you. This is a picture of what another farmer was going through in the time of harvest. It says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, Neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail. And the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18 says, Yet, woo, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And then when I do so, things begin to change. The Lord God is my strength. You see that? Strength because joy is there. The Lord is my strength. It will make my feet like hinds feet and it will make me walk upon my high places. He will make my feet like a hinds feet and make me walk upon my high places. When things happen, I tell people, relax. Don't worry. What I'm trying to say is rejoice. It's tough. But it's true. You must learn that you are not of this world. There is something that you know that can get you out of any situations of life. That is the joy of the Lord in your heart. That is the joy of the Lord in your heart. You may not have money, but make sure you have joy. 
you may not have the best of health, but make sure you have joy. Do you know that the Bible says that a, 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 a weary heart even causes more problems to your bones? The Bible says a weary heart dries up the bones. So make sure that your joy is untouched and your life will change. Your life will change. Joy, in spite of the kind of harvest that you receive, will change your life. Somebody may say, I'm depressed because I lost my grandmother. But pastor, you are saying, if you have joy, it's not yet over. What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, even if you lost your grandma and your grandma cannot come back, God can send another grandma figure to you. God can send another woman who will stand in the place of your grandma to you if you keep your joy alive. That's what I mean. It is never over. Look at the case of Naomi. Look at the case of Ruth. Ruth lost her husband but never lost her joy. That's why Obed came. Uh, I'm sorry, what's his name? Boaz. That's how Boaz came. She didn't sit there crying in depression. She lost her husband. She had moved out of the country and still lost her husband. But her joy was not tampered with. God brought Boaz. Your Boaz is coming. Your level will change. If you have joy, it is not over. It is not over. Jesus cautioned us against the things that are happening. You know, even in church, we have to be careful. As preachers, our joy is not in the number of people we preach to. I have grown past that years ago. I submit to you, there was times when I was younger in the ministry where I always desired that my, play, my face would be put on posters you know, on flyers. Now I don't even want, <laughs> I don't even want my face on anything. I just want the program, the venue, the time, the date. You have grown past that because my joy is intact. It's not depending on the happenings. It's not depending on the people that I see because the people that I don't see are more than the people that I see. Glory to God. <laughs> and when that is in place, the people start trickling in. They start driving in. When you have joy, it is not over. The mystery of joy for the harvest is that joy brings the harvest. Joy brings the harvest. Psalms 126, Psalm 125, verse 5 and 6. Joy brings the harvest. Oh, as such as turn aside. No, give me 126, verse 5 and 6. Sorry about that. Psalm 126, verse 5 and 6. Joy brings the harvest. It says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Amen. Those that sow in tears, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing in sheaves with him. Joy brings the harvest. Number two, joy preserves the harvest. You will hear a lot about this one this Wednesday. That's our focus in our Richard service this Wednesday. Joy preserves the harvest. Joel chapter 1 and verse 12. Joy preserves the harvest. The vine is dried up. The fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also. I have never seen a palm tree dry. If you've seen one, let me know. Palm trees don't go through winter and summer. They are always fresh. They are never dried. But the Bible is saying when joy is withered, even the palm tree is gone. The harvest perished. Everything will dry up. The vine is dried up. The fig tree languishes, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree. Even all the trees are withered. They are not preserved. They are lost. Why? Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. 
When the devil comes with depression, know that he's trying to get you and get you down. But when you challenge him with the joy of the Lord, you know that everything that you have is preserved. That weapon of depression is so dangerous. I believe God that in my lifetime, God will give me the grace to write a book and debunk this demon called depression. It makes simple problems become complex. Depression amplifies. Some people are depressed over little things to you, but to them, it's a big deal. When you hear of why some people are depressed, you'll be like, is that all? But to them, because depression has set in, it is a huge, it's like the only problem in the world. To them, it's worse than homelessness. It's worse than, what, abuse. It's worse than any evil thing in the world. Beware of that. When depression sets in, it makes good things become bad. Everything withers. Everything dries up. Everything gets worse. Everything gets down. In the name of Jesus, anyone under this yoke of depression, I command your release today in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke you, foul devil of depression, in the life of God's people. Get out in the name of Jesus Christ. Say after me, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. One more time, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So joy is a choice and is a must for the believer. Joy is a choice and is a must. A must choice for the believer. This is how we overcome. This is how we overcome. Through the mystery of joy. Through the mystery of joy. Understanding what joy truly is and walking in that. So joy for the harvest, number three, it secures even greater harvest for us. Joy secures greater harvest. Number one, joy brings in the harvest. Number two, joy preserves the, hive, the harvest. Number three, joy brings in more harvest to us. In Psalm 67, verse 5 to 7, Psalm 65, verse 5 to 7, the Bible says, Let the people praise thee, O Lord. Let all the people praise thee. What will happen? Then shall the earth yield more harvest. And God, even our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. When you are full of joy, you enjoy transgenerational blessings. You enjoy blessings that other people envy. Tell your neighbor, keep your joy. Keep your joy. It's important. Please. Sadness is temporal. Because sadness is based on happenings. But be careful that your joy is not messed with. Because when joy is gone, everything is gone. When joy is gone, everything is gone. So joy brings in the harvest. Joy preserves the harvest. Joy secures the harvest. And joy rewards us for the harvest. Joy rewards us for the harvest. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 12. Joy rewards us for the harvest. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 12. He said, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. So joy brings rewards. Joy brings rewards from heaven. Joy brings reward from heaven. That's why we must rejoice in the Lord always. 
And again, I say rejoice. Joy changes the things, changes the happenings. I love that song that says, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by what they say. I have joy of the Lord in my heart. I have joy of the Lord in my heart. The mystery of joy for the harvest. The mystery of joy for the harvest. You may have invited somebody to church and they didn't show up. That's not enough reason to lose your joy. They may be one of those who fell by the wayside. You may have invited. Our sister Latoya that came to church today was not the only person I invited to church today. Some fell by the wayside. I'm not bothered. <laughs> I kept my joy. Some fell among thorns. Some fell on the stony ground. I'm not bothered. Because I know there is somebody like her that God has reserved as a hundredfold increase. And I'm happy you are in church today. You are a result of our prayers of harvest. You are a result of our labors in the word and in the prayer for the harvest of souls in this state and in this nation. So don't let anything tamper with your joy. Even if you prayed and you invited them and you offered them free transportation and you offered to even pay them for coming, <laughs> they still may not show up. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. They still may not show up, but don't let that disturb your joy. You may be having a terrible time at work and you are just happy that tomorrow is a public holiday so you don't have to go to work. But I tell you something. Don't let that happening tamper with your joy. And on Tuesday, you're going to see a better result. I don't know what you're going through in your business, or maybe in your health, or maybe in your finances. Joy toughens us up to overcome the problems of life. I'm telling you this, I have many personal experiences of situations in my life where the joy of the Lord was my only rescue. I'm telling you the truth. Everything else failed. But that joy continued to strengthen me. That joy continued to give me ideas. That joy began to open favors. That joy began to give me the reward of what I'm asking for. And that's what I'm sharing with you today. I am not teaching you theories. I'm teaching you practicals. And you can, you can receive joy. How do you receive joy? First, go and look for what has been written about you in the word of God. Go and look at what has been written about you. Go and look at how God sees you. Go and see the value God has for you. When you know that, you'll be filled with joy. Go and look at the future God has packaged for you. God has your life well programmed. He cannot mismanage your life. Go and look at what is written, not what is happening. You will get the joy of the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16. Thy words were found. Jeremiah 15 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And the word was what? Unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Get in the word. Find out what God says about your business, about your health, about your finances, about your home. And the joy of the Lord will be quickened in your heart. Number two. Rejoice because you are born again. Salvation is a source of joy. Jesus told his disciples in Luke chapter 10 verse 20. Luke 10 verse 20. When, his, when the disciples came back and said, oh, even the devils are subject to us in your name. He said, no, 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 no. That's not the source of your joy. He says, don't rejoice in that. 
but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Rejoice because you are born again. Rejoice because you have God in your heart. Rejoice because you are saved. God is a responsible father. He will always take care of all of his children. Rejoice that you belong to Jesus. I'm so glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. I'm so glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. Friends, the mystery of joy is the secret source of every overcomer. There are challenges in life. I won't deny it. Jesus said, in this world, there will be tribulations. But he said, be of good cheer. That means be joyful. I have overcome the world. Rejoice! Because Christ has overcome. And because he overcame, you and I will overcome. The challenges, the troubles, the travails of life, notwithstanding, when your joy is in place, you will always overcome. Your joy will always bring for you. And the things that bring joy are the things that I has not seen. The mercy of God over your life. When you think about the mercies of God, when you think of how far God has brought you, when you think about what God has done for you, in spite of your errors, that is a source of joy. The testimonies of Jesus is a source of joy. This morning or this afternoon now, I want to challenge you to forget about what is happening and focus on who you are in the Lord. Forget about what is happening. And I don't mean just forget about it now and then when you cross the door, remember. No, I'm saying forget about it. And remember who you are. You are redeemed. You are a child of God. You are saved. You have the word of God. You are God's favorite. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Look at who you are. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. Angels are assigned to you. Amen. That's how special you are. You are royalty. Angels are assigned to you to do your bidding. You are set aside by God to show forth his praises. That's why you are going through the happenings. Because you are special. In soccer, only the man with the ball is tackled. As long as you are not with the ball, nobody cares about you. The reason why you are going through challenges is because you have something. You are somebody. You mean something to God. So don't be bothered by that. Keep your eyes on the goal. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I walk in miracles. I live a life of favor. Those are the things to remind yourself about. So forget about what is happening. Forget. Forget about it. Forget about it. And recall who you are. Remind yourself that you are better than this. Remind yourself that the more than conqueror lives inside of you. Remind yourself that because he lives, you will live past these problems. You will overcome these challenges. It will come and pass. That's what it means when the Bible says it came to pass. It will come, but it will pass behind you. You will always triumph in the name of Jesus. Does somebody receive that word from the Lord this day? Just lift up your hand and just thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Now I want you to reaffirm to yourself, speak to yourself who you are. I am more than a conqueror. The greater one lives inside of me. I have joy. My joy is untampered with. I will overcome the happenings. I will overcome the difficulties. I will overcome the pain. I will overcome the hurt. 
because I'm a child of God. Oh, begin to reaffirm yourself with the word of the Lord today. Mm, a thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me because I'm a child of God. Woo! Go ahead and reaffirm yourself. I have joy like a river. It's flowing on my inside. And out of my belly shall flow forth rivers of living waters. I have joy. And therefore I will overcome. I will overcome. I have overcome already. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. I sincerely mean this word of the Lord from my heart. It's coming from the deepest part of my belly. Because I want, to see, I want to hear of your testimony. I want to see God change your life. Maybe I should say this with my wife's permission. A few days ago, we had gone around and it was time to sleep. My wife said, let's pray and go to bed. I said, I can't sleep. She said, why? I said, Tula members, Tula members, Tula members. They are, I have a burden in my heart to pray for them. To pray for them. And what, I was, what was I praying? I was telling the Lord, Lord, please change their lives. Please change their story. I happen to know some of the challenges some of you are going through. And it is top in my heart before the Lord. I'm on the altar. I must not lie. I know the challenges some of you are going through. And it is top in my heart from the Lord. Before I ask the Lord for something, I talk about you. So when I have received this message of joy, it means God is about to do something. Yeah. But he just wants you to stay in joy. Stay in the place of joy. Please, I beg you. So that my prayers and my labor of prayers will work. Please keep that joy. God is never late. God can never be late. When God shows up is the right time. Lazarus was dead for four days. But Jesus said, marvel not, for I am the resurrection and I am the life. I can do what no man can do. So please, I mean this message from my heart. God is about to do something because I am burdened. Can I share some of the prayers I pray for you? I say, Lord, you are collecting their offering. You must give them a testimony. That is my prayer. I told the Lord, you are collecting their offerings every Sunday, every Wednesday. You must answer their prayers. And I know he will. Amen. This is my heart for you. This is how I feel about you. Amen. There's one of our brothers whose dad is in the hospital. That's why he's not here. We have gone to visit Amen. to pray for him. And we are praying for him. Amen. I'm not one of those pastors that sees this as an enterprise. I have my heart and my life invested in this. I want to see your lives changed. I want to see your destinies released. I want to hear good things about you. But please, don't give up. Let your joy stay in place. For God is up to something. And that something will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. All right, let's give an opportunity to anyone under the sound of my voice who is yet to be saved. If you are not saved, you are not safe. If you are not born again, you are up for grabs. When the devil wants to test the latest release of depression, all the people who are unsaved are going to be laboratory rats for the tests. He will come. Just like Apple releases upgrades for their software, the devil also releases updates, upgrades for sickness, for depression, for disease, and he tests them on those who are not saved. So today, if you are under the sound of my voice, you can be rescued. You can be saved. All you have to do is believe in your heart and say this prayer of faith with me from the depth of your heart. All around the nations of the world, where you are watching this message, whether live or whether you are watching it at your own time, 
If you are not saved, you must be saved. You must be born again. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must. It's not an option. You must be saved for this joy to be present in your life. Therefore, please, if you want to give your heart to Jesus, you can rise up if you are able to, or you can, if you are driving, definitely you can stand up. But whatever you are doing right now, please bow your heads, close your eyes, and say this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today just as I am. I'm a sinner, and I know that you are my Savior. Please forgive me of my sins and make me your child again. I believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now I know that I'm saved. I'm born again. I am now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Father, for saving me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please, if you said that prayer, keep your eyes closed and your head bowed as I pray over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you hear me always. Lord, these ones have come to you today. <laughs> and according to your word, in John chapter 6 and verse 37, you said there's nobody that comes to you that you will reject, no matter the circumstances. Lord, they have come to you with their cross, with their shame, with their filth, with their guilt, with their dirt. Lord, please accept them. Please renew them. Please repair them. Please restore them. Please renew them. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a recovery of everything the thief has stolen, has killed, and has destroyed in their lives. And let the joy of the Lord be restored in their hearts. Restore to them the joy of salvation and renew their spirit within them. And on the last day, when you come to take us all home, may all of us be ready and qualified to reign with you in eternity in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Let there be rejoicing in the house this day. Hallelujah. God has rescued some people. God has added to the kingdom. And God has brought in more people. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, congratulations. You are now a member of the household of God. And the spirit of joy has been installed in your heart. Therefore, reach out to us so that we can disciple you and take you through a discipleship of how to enjoy this new software that God has put inside of you. Please reach out to us on any of our social media platforms. You can reach out to us or send us an email at newbirth at tola.org. Newbirth at tola.org. The Lord bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank everyone that came to this service today. I trust you have been blessed. You know, I'm glad that you came. And um, I'm very, very encouraged by the testimony of our sister. Who will choose God over money? Who will choose being in the sanctuary than being at work? I have nothing if you have to be at work. I have nothing against that. But if you had a choice, please choose to be in the sanctuary. It's far more important. The things that God has done today cannot be bought with money. The words that you have received today, they are valuable. And you don't want to miss that. So please, always make it a point of duty to come to church. I'm not saying that because I want the house of God to be filled. Yes, I do want it to be filled, but I want much more for your life to be blessed. 
you may walk in here as a cat. I want you to walk out as a lion. I want you to walk out as a lion. So get set for every service. And if you can, please bring somebody with you. Bring somebody who's struggling. Bring somebody who needs this kind of prayer, who needs this kind of word. Bring them. And God will change their stories too. In the name of Jesus. Our brother, the, uh, the view did that this week. And I'm talking to the young man. Bring them. Jesus is ready to accept all of them. Jesus is ready to receive them. No matter how far they've gone. The Lord will help us. In Jesus name. Let's rise up as we close. We are two minutes over schedule. But we thank God for his grace. Let's lift up our hands again and say thank you to Jesus. For sending his word to us. Jesus said blessed are your ears that hear those things. Lord, thank you for sending your word, for this great service, for installing in us the new software of joy. Thank you for unveiling to us the mystery of joy for the harvest. Lord, we give you praise. We bless your name. Thank you, for it is you that gives the word, not me. Thank you for giving us the word. Thank you for sending the word. Thank you for the power of your word. All the glory belongs to you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Can you do me a favor and speak to your weak? Prophesy into your weak. God wants to hear your voice. So prophesy into your weak. What do you want this week to bring for you? What are the changes you want to see at work, at home, in your health? and your finances this week, speak them out. Speak them out. If you can, specify which day of this week you want to see that. Mano sapradesh kalatano ziyalata. Mino sapreketele rudabashanglari talia tabarash. Mano to sofredish talikada. Oh, thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Let me give you 30 more seconds to do that. Speak to your weak. What do you desire of the Lord? The Bible says, when you pray, believe, and you shall receive them. Mark eleven twenty four. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name. I join my faith with yours because the Bible says if two or more, two or three shall agree concerning a thing, it shall be done unto them. So I agree with you in the name of Jesus that everything you have asked for is done. And then I prophesy over your life as God's appointed servant over this house. As the angel of the Lord assigned to this house, I decree answers to every prayer of your heart. Any situation that you left at home before coming, in the name of Jesus, I command a turnaround. As you go, go in peace. Return with testimonies. And may the God of all grace, the God that called me and sent me, grant you the answer to the desires of your heart. You are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And the church of God say aloud, amen. amen. Let's share the grace together in fellowship from 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14. Let's say this over our lives. One, two, ready, go. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with us all. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Have a great day. Happy Memorial Day in advance. The Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
We thank you for listening to today's message. We know you have been blessed. So for more of these messages, please visit us on our website at www.thola.org and subscribe to our YouTube channel at THOLA TV. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at THOLA underscore church. God bless you and keep on shining. Jesus.